All right. This morning I decided to make, while I make my dessert for my dinner tonight, because I'm having 25 people over, I decided I'll just combine it with my morning talk show. The only problem is this, by the time you see this, we will have eaten these. But these are for tonight and this is for tomorrow. You get it? All right. This is called mini cheesecakes. And you can make this, make it like really fancy looking because they're individual desserts. And when I make them, people eat more than one though. So, you know, so, you know, make enough. I don't know how many this recipe makes. So we're gonna try it out. I already have one batch in the oven. So what you do is you <coughs> cough all over your food. No, you don't. Two packages of eight ounce cream cheese. That's $2 each. So you're spending $4. A half a cup of sugar, the vanilla wafers, which I bought the house brand because they're $3, whereas vanilla wafers were five. Not spending five when I could spend three when you don't know the difference. And then your vanilla and two eggs. That's all it is. And then it makes this, you put it in the mixer, everything in the mixer, mix, 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 till it's all nice. And then you fill your little muffin things. Now I bought this orange one on Temu silicone. So this is the first time I'm trying it. So now if you didn't have the small ones and you just had a regular muffin tin, the difference would be your cookie doesn't quite fill the bottom of a bigger one. So I don't know what would happen then because the, I've only made these little ones. Now, if you don't have money, you could go to Goodwill and try to find some of these because usually old ladies have these and they died. So their ancestors that got all their stuff took them to Goodwill. So there's a tip for you. But I'm a baker, so I have everything practically that they make because I'm old and I, my grandma died, my mother died, and then you inherit everything. Okay, so you put your paper liners, I don't know if I'm gonna need them all, in here with the cookie in the bottom. Now, I found that this one, this little, littlest one, works, is the right size. And then you just drop it in, try not to make a mess. That's really hard for me to not make a mess. I have that one pancake thing. Should have put it in there. But I don't want to get it out and stuff because this is right here. So like I said, I made these before. They had an open house and I made these and they were a big hit. And I had a baby shower once and I made them and they were a big hit. So, it's quite simple, and they're like deluxe. So after they bake, I have a hair on my hand, oh no. After they bake, it's on my bracelet. Oh, it's caught on my bracelet, a hair. You're supposed to take your jewelry off when you cook. I have this I bought in Michigan at Ollie's. We don't have an Ollie's here. And I paid $2.99 for it at Ollie's for blueberry. Or I'm going to put the cherry. But if I know cherry pie filling nowadays, there is probably not enough cherries in here for each one. So one of them will get like just the sauce without the cherry. Makes me so mad. They skimp on you. But I don't know because I never had that brand before. Yes, I have cherries from our cherry tree. I could make it from scratch. Please don't make me. This is just for family. My husband goes, now honey, I hope everything goes okay tonight. I go, Jamie, it's just a family dinner. It's not like, now see my family always said when somebody was coming, important that we had to put on the dog. And we just always said that. And then we also say, my family, always when you clear off the table, we call it, it's your turn to side the table. 
and that meant clear off the table. And that's what I grew up with. But then other people, if you say, um, it's your turn to side the table, they like to look at you like, what are you talking about? So we did some research on these sayings that we say. And I guess maybe it was in Scotland or something, and they used to have a side table to serve the food on or something. I don't know. This is just what I heard. And probably people in Scotland were watching this going, I don't know what you're talking about. So I don't know. Maybe I don't. This is just what we heard, that they had a side table and the food would be over there. And so they had to, you know, clean up the side table. Yes, I licked my fingers. Yes, there's raw egg in it. No, I never died from it. So, but they make cookie dough nowadays that you can eat. My grandkids wanted to do that. Grandma, can we make that cookie dough you just eat? The raw cookie dough. Well, I like that idea. You don't have to bake cookies. But I didn't do it. We ran out of time when they come. Because they had to paint. They did all their painting crafts, which was so fun for them. And they're pretty good at it. I thought it would be horrible, but they were good. And then they, um, this is going to make a lot. It's going to feed like the family reunion. But remember, people want to eat more than one. Because these are like bite size almost. And so then you eat one, or, or here's another thing I learned, when you're feeding a whole bunch of people, like having two different flavors, they wanna try both of them, even though they're full. So if you make, have a big crowd for a dinner, and you know, it's just for family, we're not trying to put on a dog, that's what we always would say. I don't know what that meant, because we never did kill a dog to eat. I don't know. I think countries, I don't know if any country does eat dogs. I don't want to eat one. So I don't know where that saying came from. We're putting on the dog. But anyway, what was I going to say? Oh, like, so you're making a big salad and then you say, oh, I, there's a lot of people here. I better make two different salads or three, or you have a potluck with a whole bunch of different kinds of salads. Everybody wants to try each one. So then there's more food waste and there's more, um, like, you gotta have more food then. So I have found when I do the big barbecue for my whole family for the holidays or whatever, nope, we're having one salad, one kind of salad, one giant, you know, the big giant salad, one kind of everything. And then it works out much better because everyone eats just the one and they don't have to try eight kinds wasting. Then you throw all that food out on their plate because those little children wanted to try it all and then they didn't eat it all. I hate waste. Take a little. You can always come back for more if there's any left. That's what I always tell them. Okay, this is gonna make, that's 24. And I already have 12 in there. It's gonna make 48. 12 and 12 is 24. 2 times 24 is 48. So, is that, I did the math right. I'm hot. Hot in here because the oven's on. How much batter do I have left? A lot still. So, this will make enough to feed 24 people maybe. Well, I'm having 25. Or, of course, I don't know if every all the children. Grant has sports after school. See, we usually have a Sunday dinner. But then all of Chad's girls work. They work at the adult handicap place. Adult disabled. Adult mentally challenged place. They have cerebral palsy and stuff like that. And they live in this home. So my granddaughters, they work there. And they're really good with those people. That's so nice. Because, you know, we need people like that in the world that will take care of them. So, um, but they work on Sundays. So, um, every time we have a Sunday dinner, then they don't get to come. And that makes us sad. Because we all live in the same town and here we don't even see each other. So I said, okay, we're going to do it on Monday night instead of Sunday. 
And I think it might be a good idea, except for the people who, the kids that are in sports. Now to me, by six o'clock at night, they should be done by sports and be home with the family. Get home with the family, have family dinner. But I'm gonna have to talk that one Grant's coach is at my, goes to my church, you know. I'm gonna go up to him, I'm gonna say, okay, listen, we're gonna play a trick on Grant. Because every time Grant tells me, well, my coach won't let us do that. My coach says this, my coach says, run, makes us run, all that stuff. I said, do you want me to talk to your coach and tell him that that is making you run too much and you can't do it. You're making it, making you too tired. He goes, no, grandma, don't do that. <laughs> so I'm going to go to the coach and I'm going to say, okay, we're playing a trick on Grant. I want you to tell him that I came up to you and told you that you're working him too hard. And I think that you should, you know, lighten up on him. And let him go home a little early because the family dinners and stuff. Anyway, we're going to play trick on him. And then Grant's going to get, the coach can go to Grant and say all that. And then Grant's going to get so embarrassed. <laughs> ah, I, I wish it would go over well, but it may not. Have you seen that one prank? And they do it up ahead of time. So that, you know, the dad's not in on it. Just the mom and the kid. And... This works great if you have a child that, I mean, a husband that really is into this. I don't know what you call it. But, so the, the head of time, the mother goes, okay, I'm going to call you to tell you to do something. And then you just be really sassy or and say no and shut up and everything. And say, okay. So, they do it when the dad's in the living room. And so here they are. The mother goes, the mother goes, uh, whatever the kid's name is, Charles, come here. And then he, I need you to do something, whatever. And then the kid yells back, no, mom, shut up, leave me alone. And you should see the dad then. He just jumps right up and starts to go over to the kid. And they go, no, 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 it's just a joke. We're just tricking you. Anyway, that was funny. But it wouldn't have worked in my household because my dad... He never paid attention. He was oblivious to anything we said. I think he was hard of hearing. And and in my family, it would be my mother who would come after us, not my dad. My mother was very nice and everything, but she demanded respect. My dad, he didn't know what was going on half the time. <laughs> He's always reading the newspaper when he got home from work. And my dad would be sitting there and my mom, us kids would be roughhousing or something and he'd go, my mother would go, Cuddy, shut those kids up or something like that. Dad would go, huh? Look up from his newspaper, huh? And my mother would like, don't you hear what, don't you see what those kids are doing and stuff? And he's like, huh, no. We never bothered him a bit. She would go, shut them up. So then he would, he kind of like slap at us, cut it out. So then we did, because that's what dad did. And then at night we wouldn't go to sleep in our beds. And because we all slept in one room, we had a double bed that slept two of us, two sisters, and then the twin bed was Shauna, the other sister, because she was more rowdy. She had ADHD, whatever. So she had to be by herself and she was left-handed. So she always had to sit on the one end of the table and she always got special treatment. <laughs> anyway, so I have to look at my timer. So um, my mother would, we would be roughhousing in our beds playing and not going to sleep. And she'd go, how do you go in there and check those kids out and make them go to sleep? So he'd go in there and he'd, he'd take off his belt and make a big production of taking off his belt. And then he would just hit it on the bed <laughs> and we would scream, ah, okay, we'll be we going to sleep. He never hit us. Made my mom happy. <laughs> and we knew that we had to go to sleep. But we always laughed at that. How dad would just hit the bed with the belt. He never would hit us. He was a kind man. And then 
he would always, my little sister always got a pee back right to bed every night. Little spoiled thing. I don't know if I did. All right. I probably did because I'm four years older than her. And so I was a baby for four years. So my dad would tell me rabbit stories and he would cross his leg like this where the hole here and I would claw through and pretend I'm a rabbit. And I got this from Timu. I'm going to put the little cheesecakes on this. And then I have one up here that's a clear one. I have two clear ones. Emily wants one. I'm going to give one to her. She said she wanted one. But this is three tiers. So that's only two tiers. So it's going to be fancy. And then I always set all the food up on this buffet. It works perfect. And this goes over the hole. My garbage hole right here. And then we'll set up the big pot. And all the trimmings and all the paper plates and the punch and everything. And then people could go from both sides, get their food, either go here. In the summertime, they go out there <coughs> to eat. And it's the perfect setup. Not for Thanksgiving dinner. Now, I have a, leaf, a table that has 14 leaves. So we could have a real sit-down dinner. But... It sucks because by the time they pass that food down here, the bowls are so heavy with all the food. You don't get all your, I want the gravy and the butter and you have two on each end. You know, you try everything, nothing works. This buffet thing works the best. And the other thing is I let the adults go first. That is the rule because you know how kids are picky and touch things and lick it and then, no, adults go first. We get to get the first pick of all the meat and everything. Then the kids can go. Okay, it's supposed to cook for 20 minutes. 22, and that's not done yet. And so, it has to bake at 325. And then you set the timer and then it goes off. I don't like this new stove much. So it says 20 to 25 minutes. So I'll set it. Just a minute, I gotta set the timer. Look, why can't you just hold it? You have to push it every time. Okay. And I don't like it. You have to get used to new stuff. It's like, give me the old dial stuff, not the push button. And I put all of my, what are these called? Cupcake liners in here. I can't buy any more until I bake a whole bunch because it won't, not, nothing else will fit. And then that hat, because my drawers are too full to put them in drawers. So I was going to say something else about something and I can't remember what it was because I know it was going to be important about my cooking, baking, Sunday dinners. Now it's Monday dinners. But see, it's a school night, so they're gonna have to end, you know, at a decent time. I think I'll have paper plates because, why do you think? Yeah, it'll be easier. So anyway, I will try to film. Of course, by the time you see this, it'll be over with. But I should film it for you so that you can see what the crowd looks like. I'll show you here, since I am only 18 minutes, I'll show you outside. And look at my petunias right here. I brought them in from outside. They're doing good. I need to trim it all though, but they're doing good. Look at this. I told my husband, get that out of here. But that thing. When he was cold, he hooked it up. He's gonna die of inhalation or something, but he doesn't leave it on very long. Anyway, it's the pastures. The rule is here in, by April 15th, the snow should be gone from the middle of the pastures. So that's what we go by, but last year it was not. So we'll see what it does this year. But Jamie plows, so we have a little ground here. He said the daffodils are starting to come up, peeking through. 
This plant's not doing very well because I ignored it. When you ignore them, they don't do well. I need to water and fertilize. Isn't there always something to do? Always, always. So you just pick and choose sometimes. Because if you try to do everything, then you're gonna have an nurse breakdown. So calm down, don't do it all. Anyway, okay. I was kind of, I'm kind of waiting for these ones to get done so you can see, but I know how to splice. So I'll just do that and hopefully it'll work. If it doesn't, I'll just have to show you the finished product as the cover shot. Okay, bye. What am I doing? Thinking food. <laughs> it's white chicken chili. That's right. She knows what it is. That's right. I do. People don't want to be recorded. No. But she knows how to do it. Stop, Grandma. <laughs> Ari and Kyler. So, 